Hey you guys, this is Mr. Millings and today we're going to learn about atomic orbitals. So what are atomic orbitals and how do they work? Well it says right here that atomic orbitals are the physical region or space where electrons can be calculated to have the highest probability of being located. Essentially, atomic orbitals are a probability map for, for locating electrons around the nucleus of an atom. And any orbital can be occupied by a maximum of two electrons and each one of those electrons are going to have its own little spin. So essentially, in an earlier video, we learned that you cannot pinpoint the exact location of an electron uh, in the electron cloud surrounding the nucleus. Instead, what you can do is come up with the probability for where those electrons might be. And the probability for where those electrons might be basically represents the atomic orbitals. These are calculated. The calculated regions in the electron cloud where those electrons have the highest probability of being. And there's all kinds of different little orbitals that we're going to talk about. For example, there are s orbitals, there are p orbitals, there are d orbitals, and there are f orbitals. Now your teacher might call them sublevels. I'm simply calling them orbitals. It just kind of makes it easier. All right, so let's first start talking about the s orbital. What is the s orbital or the s orbitals? Well, the s orbital is a spherically shaped orbital that surrounds the nucleus of atoms, and it can hold a maximum of two electrons. Okay, so if we take a look right here, we can see a little s orbital right here, and this will be a place where electrons can hang out and they're spinning in, in oppositely directions if there's more than one electron in here. And this little s orbital right here can hold a maximum of two electrons. So right here if we take a look at this picture here, we have an s orbital that is in the first energy level or ring. We have an s orbital here that is in the second energy level. And we have an s orbital right here that is in the third energy level. And this little s orbital can hold a maximum of two electrons. All right, so that is the s orbital. Now let's take a look at the p orbitals or p sublevel. All right, the next set of orbitals are called the p orbitals. And if we take a look at the p orbitals, the p orbitals are a, dumb, a dumbbell shaped orbital. And there are diff three different p orbitals. If we take a look right here, there's going to be three different p orbitals. And each one of these p orbitals can hold a maximum of two electrons. So if we take a look, there's a p orbital right here that's occupying this region of space surrounding the nucleus of an atom. There's a p orbital right here that is also occupying this region of space surrounding the nucleus of an atom. And if we take a look, here's a third and final p orbital that is occupying this region of space surrounding the nucleus of an atom. And if we take a look, there's a maximum of two electrons that can fit in each one of these p orbitals. So there's a maximum of two electrons that can fit in each one of these little p orbitals right here. And if we combine these three p orbitals together surrounding the nucleus of an atom, it's going to look something like this right here. Okay? So if we take a look, if there's a maximum of two electrons that can fit in each p orbital, then all of the p sublevel can hold a maximum of six, right? Six electrons. Two here, two here, and two here for a maximum of six electrons in the p sublevel which contains all three p orbitals. Okay, so those are the p orbitals. Let's take a look now at the d orbitals. Okay, so in the d sublevel, there's going to be five little orbitals. So there are basically five d orbitals. And each one of these can also hold a maximum of two electrons. Okay, so combined, the d sublevel, which contains five little orbitals, can hold a maximum of ten electrons. Two electrons here in this region around the nucleus, two electrons here in this region of the nucleus, two electrons in this d orbital surrounding the, uh, the nucleus here, and uh, two electrons here, and two electrons here for a maximum of two, four, six, eight, ten electrons. Okay, so the, the d sublevel, which consists of five different little orbitals, can hold a maximum of ten electrons, uh, occupying the regions of space that we see right here. And if you Combine all of these d orbitals together, it's going to look something like this right here. So what we start seeing is a more dynamic uh, atom compared to the to the, uh, the Bohr model that we discussed in an earlier video. All right, so those are the uh, the d orbitals in the d sublevel. Now let's take a look at the f sublevel that contains f orbitals. All right, so next up we have the f sublevel, which contains the 
f orbitals and there are, are going to be seven different f orbitals and each one of these can also hold a maximum of two electrons so combine the f sublevel which consists of these five little orbitals right here can hold a maximum of 14 electrons occupying uh, the regions of space that we see in front of us surrounding the nucleus of the atom for example if we take a look two electrons can fit in here no more right there's a maximum of two electrons that can fit in this little orbital there's a maximum of two electrons that can fit in here and here and here and here and here and here occupying these regions of space surrounding the nucleus so combine the f sub level which contains seven different little orbitals can hold a maximum of 14 electrons okay so understand that concept, okay, that uh, there are uh, S orbitals or an F S sublevel. There's a P sublevel that contains three different little orbitals. There's a D sublevel that contains five different little orbitals. And there's an F sublevel that can hold seven uh, or that has seven different little orbitals. Okay, so when we combine this idea with the idea of the principal energy level, or rings if you wanted to think it that way then we end up with something like this and what we're looking at here is a, uh, a, a representation of the maximum number of electrons that can fit in each little uh, energy level if we take a look it works like this if we have a, 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 the nucleus of the atom like this and this right here this would be the first little energy level or ring and that is n equals 1 right so n is going to be a quantum number that tells us the energy level so here is the first energy level and then if I draw another little circle using the Bohr model this would be n equals 2 and so on and so forth if I draw another little circle using a Bohr model of the atom then this will be n equals 3 so n here like we see right here represents the ring or energy level that surrounds the nucleus and if we take a look in the very first energy level surrounding the nucleus of an atom it only contains one little sublevel the s orbital and if we can only fit two electrons in here maximum then that means that the first little energy level or ring can hold a maximum of two electrons okay so that is why the first energy level or first ring of an atom can only hold two electrons okay because it only has one sub level containing this s orbital right here all right if we jump out to this second little ring or second energy level we'll see that the second energy level contains two sub levels it contains an s orbital and it contains the p orbitals right and we know the s orbital can hold two electrons and the p orbitals all three of them can hold a maximum of six and if we add this together we get eight so this second little ring right here the second energy level can hold eight electrons maximum because it has the s sub level and the p sub level the S can hold a maximum of 2, and the P can hold a maximum of 6, right? That adds up to 8. If we jump to this third little ring right here, this third energy level contains three sublevels. It contains the S orbital, it contains the P orbitals, and it contains the D orbitals. The S's can hold a maximum of 6, the P's can hold a maximum of I'm sorry, the S's can hold a maximum of two, the P's can hold a maximum of six, and because there's five different little d orbitals, each one of those can hold two. Five times two is going to be ten electrons, okay, in the d sublevel, in these five little orbitals in the d sublevel. And if we add this together, ten plus six plus two is going to be eighteen, right? Eighteen. So the third energy level or third ring can hold a maximum of eighteen electrons for this reason. If we jump out to a fourth little energy level right here let me draw this right here if we jump out to a fourth energy level then the fourth energy level is going to contain s sub level p sub level d sub level and f sub level right and in the s sub level we have one little orbital and it can hold a maximum of two electrons the p's the p sub level has three different orbitals in it each can hold two so a maximum of six will go in there the d sub level has five orbitals and each can hold a maximum of two for a total of ten and the f sub level can or has seven different little orbitals each one of those orbitals can hold a maximum of two electrons giving us 14 electrons and if we add this together in the fourth little ring here or fourth energy level 2 plus 6 plus 8 plus 14 is going to add up to 32 electrons 
32 electrons can fit in the fourth energy level. And if we had a fifth energy level up here, it would look just the same as this fourth energy level right here. The fifth energy level contains S, P, D, and F sublevels. And so a maximum of 32 electrons can fit in the fifth energy level. So to organize this data on a table, if we take a look, what we're going to end up with is this right here, right? We have two different little tables here. And this just basically shows us that in the first ring or energy level, there's only an S orbital and it can hold two electrons, right? In the second energy level or second ring, uh, it contains S and Ps. And so the maximum number of electrons in the second energy level, like we just talked about, is eight and so on and so forth. So first energy level, two electrons is the max. In the second, the maximum number of electrons is eight. In the third energy level, we have 18 maximum electrons that can fit in there. In the fourth energy level, the maximum is 32. And in the fifth energy level, the maximum is also 32. But understand why that is. That occurs because each one of these energy levels has these different sublevels that contain different orbitals, each holding a certain or specific amount of electrons. Okay, so understand that concept. In uh, elementary school and in junior high school, you probably learn the concept of this right here. The first energy level is two, second is eight, etc., etc. But now understand why that is, because each energy level has a sublevel consisting of different orbitals. Okay, and this just shows us that the s orbital. There's only one of them, right? And so, or one shape, so it can only hold a maximum of two electrons. Uh, if we jump to a p sublevel, then there's three different little orbitals. And so each one of those can hold two, so a maximum of six can fit in there. There's five little shapes of d orbitals. Each can hold two for a maximum of ten. And then with the f sublevel, there's seven different little orbitals. Each can hold two for a maximum of fourteen. Okay, so understand that concept. Let's talk now really briefly about quantum numbers. All right, so in an earlier video, we were talking about the Bohr model of the atom. Right here's the nucleus and surrounding the nucleus we have these little electrons that can jump into higher energy levels uh, by absorbing energy level uh, energy and then they can jump back down uh, by releasing energy in the, in the form of light and these just kind of circle the nucleus like this right here and that's going to be your Bohr model of the atom okay so in the Bohr model of the atom the Bohr model of the atom describes the electrons surrounding the nucleus on one basic level right on one basic level. It talks about those electrons being in these different energy levels or n, right? That's quantum number n, which refers to the energy level or ring. However, we know that the atom is more dynamic than that. It's three-dimensional, right? It occupies three-dimensional space. And so those electrons are also going to occupy three-dimensional space. And so when we're talking about where those electrons are or where the highest probability they have of being, we can use a set of kind of like coordinates, kind of like a GPS coordinate almost of where those electrons have the highest probability. We can talk about where they're at as far as an energy level and what ring they are or n. We can talk about the shape of the orbital that they're in. For example, uh, the s and p and d and f orbital, etc., etc. Then we're talking about this quantum number right here, l, right? The uh, the shape of the uh, orbital that they're in. We can also talk about <clears throat> Uh, you know, the, the electron spin, right? The electron spin. If there's two electrons that are in a little orbital, one of them is going to spin one direction and one of them is going to spin the other direction because they have uh, the same charge and uh, same charges are going to kind of repel each other. All right, and last quantum number right here is uh, the angular momentum, all right? It represents the, the place in three-dimensional space the electrons are in each sublevel or orbital. All right, so these are quantum numbers, and unless you're in AP physics or college-level uh, chemistry class, you really probably won't talk much about the quantum numbers here. But I just wanted you to understand that in the Bohr model of the atom, uh, Bohr is talking about these electrons on one little uh, one little plane essentially, whereas we now know in the wave mechanical model of the atom that uh, that we need to talk about those electrons surrounding the nucleus on several different little coordinates in three-dimensional space. Okay, so this is atomic orbitals in a nutshell. If you like what you see, go ahead and click that little bomb in the bottom right-hand corner, and that will subscribe you to my channel. And feel free to leave any comments or questions in the comment section down below. And I hope you guys found this helpful.